Hello, welcome to our live stream of an artist talk with Eric A. Johnson from Big Oak Press. Hi, Eric. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. We're, we're still need to wait a few minutes while the stream populates. Okay. So if you'd like to introduce yourselves um, sure. and let us know um, for the viewers, if you'd like to let us know where you're from or tell us if you're an artist or a collector, that would be great. And Eric and I are just going to chat while we wait for uh, the stream to populate. Okay. So, Eric, I think that the first time I met you was during Print Expo of 2020. Was that the first time that you were part of Print Expo? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Um, so we're getting that feedback again now. I'm trying to get my phone away. Um, yeah, that was 2020. Right. Yeah. Right before the, no, 2019. Actually. 2019. Wasn't it? Because 2020, you didn't. No, it was 2020. So right was... before the pandemic, yeah. I know it's a little, I have a difficult time with those dates too, just because, you know, we lost an entire year. Um, right. But we have a picture of you on our website right now. I don't know if you've seen it. You're, it's down below and it has you in front of your area. Um, with a with a a collector looking at your work. Yeah. So. Yeah, I did see that. Um, yeah, it was it was a uh, a great uh, experience coming down, and um, it just I think I I had been uh, looking to do some more print fairs and um, uh, things like that, and it happens that my wife uh, has her aunt and uncle. Uh, who live close to uh, close to Austin, um, and then they have um, some. Her her cousin actually lives down there too. Uh, so how did you hear about Pern Austin? They were they were the ones that told you about it, or no? Um, I think I found it on Instagram or Facebook. Okay. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so also the weather is probably nicer in Austin in February than North Dakota. It, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, usually in February, you know, we could be anywhere from uh, 25, 30 below to, it, it would be it would be nice in February if it was 25 above or 30, when people start wearing shorts and getting outside. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. We experienced winter this year uh, for a week it was mm -hmm. it was difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, I we had a lot of yeah. 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 Um, so I'm I'm curious about your. So I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, so if you want to just introduce yourself as your you know your artist life, I'm I'm curious to hear this too. And then I'm going to vacate the screen okay. while. You are talking. Let me see. Let me hide that. Okay. All right. Are, are you hearing any echo, or is it just me with this phone? You know, I am not. Is but if any, yeah, I am not. But if I'll just set that a little bit further away from me. Okay. And it be good. All right. All right. Is anybody else hearing? Um, is anybody else hearing echo? How's the sound on the other end? Let me know if it. Let me know if, if the if the audio starts sounding bad, folks, and then we can try and adjust. All right. All right. So, um, just a little bit about myself. I am um, a, a North Dakota native. I live in North Dakota. I grew up on a farm, um, a little bit uh, east of uh, Fargo, North Dakota, um, and had went to a really small high school. We didn't have any art in, in high school. And uh, it came from a big family. I have four sisters and, and uh, one brother. And uh, the joke is that um, one of my older sisters uh, scared away our art teacher that we had once at, at our school. Um, but anyway, I didn't, I didn't really have any art training up until I went to, to college uh, at NDSU. I had no idea I wanted to 
be an artist or go into art until uh, I took some art classes there. Um, after that, I went to the University of North Dakota, which is in Grand Forks, um, and got my master's of fine art there uh, in 2001. Uh, since then, I've been uh, adjunct at most of the <laughs> different universities that are between um, Fargo and Moorhead, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, Moorhead, Minnesota. They're um, kind of sister cities right on the, on the Red River um, between them. Um, as far as my, my, my art life now, um, I have, like I said, been, been adjunct at, at a, several different universities, some, sometimes a couple at the same time. Um, and now I have um, narrowed it down to just one ad adjunct job where um, I teach in um, Detroit Lakes, Minnesota at Minnesota State Community and Technical College there. Um, they also have campuses at um, Moorhead, Fergus Falls, Wadena, um, and Detroit Lakes. So four campuses, and sometimes I'm at a couple at once. Um, uh, bought my own press uh, a couple of years ago. And, Hi. <laughs> okay. um, so in 2019, I bought my own press um, and set up a studio, printmaking studio at home uh, in my garage. And that's where I've been since about 2019 is when I officially opened here. Uh, before that, I was doing most of, um, I should say that while I've been doing all the adjunct stuff, um, I was a intern um, resident artist. Um, they changed the name um, of what I was doing. Sometimes I didn't know what I was doing. I'm not sure if they did. Uh, at NDSU in, with their printmaking studio. Um, and uh, so that's where I created all of my work uh, up until uh, like from 2005 until 2018 or 19 uh, when I set up here. Um, so a little bit about uh, collecting. So- Oh, I have a quick question for you. Sure. So, I mean, I'm an artist and I've had a difficult time during the pandemic of, you know, creating work. And I'm just curious, you're talking about having your own studio at home. Have, has, have you had those problems too? I mean, um, my, my studio isn't far away and I haven't, I haven't been able to get there. Y yeah. Um, so yeah, it was kind of, <coughs> um, you know, having just just set up at home, um, like I found myself in probably a, a great uh, position compared to other printmakers um, who, who couldn't get to a studio that's a, a shared or a, a group studio. So um, I had I had a show scheduled about a year ago. So I had um, done a lot of printmaking um, in the, the prior two years or three years. Uh, so I was ready to take a break kind of from printmaking at the time um, when the pandemic started, but I did have a couple projects that I uh, finished up. And then I, um, I also had started a couple prints um, and then um, they said, you know, I, I finished one project in May uh, of last year, and then I didn't really do any printmaking for all of the summer. I don't know if that was pandemic related or um, mostly because I just I was uh, ready to take a break from printmaking. So I did a lot of other like creative stuff. But it was nice having the option to do some stuff. I did I did some work in the studio, like um, building shelves and stuff like that. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, thanks. No, it's just, I mean, I, um, it was more to me, I was having difficulty getting motivated. Um, was was yeah. that problem, but. I, I've, I felt that too. And um, like I said, I, I just did other things, maybe not, uh, you know, I questioned <laughs> what the importance of my work with everything going on, like, my stuff is just like 
I don't know. It doesn't seem that important, but I guess it's important to me <laughs> uh, as as uh, just feeling healthy. I think I need to I need to make something, even though it's it it it's not saying anything about what has went on in the last year, and maybe that will come eventually. But so more for me, it was like, why am I doing this? Why am I spending so much time doing this? Um, that was kind of my kind of thing. Right, I understand. We we do have a comment from somebody from Dripping Springs who's looking forward to your demo. I, I really don't know what the population is of the folks that are viewing how many collectors we have versus artists. Um, so there may be a mix of folks that are on here, but all right. Sorry to interrupt with that question, but I was just curious. Okay. So um, I can go right into collecting then. Um, I was telling Kathy, I don't really, I don't collect a lot of prints unless I'm trading with other people, but but um, people, I guess, collect my work. And, and what I hear from them, one of the things they like about printmaking is, um, well, maybe I don't hear it, but I, I think I gather, and from the history of printmaking, you know, the, the usually they're a little bit cheaper than say buying a painting, uh, an original painting. Um, but I know there's some confusion also with uh, cliche reproductions and um, the type of printmaking that that um, print Austin is about and that that we do. Um, so the the biggest the biggest difference is you know the the cliche um, reproductions. It's kind of hard to tell, um, but if you're if you're trying to purchase a uh, what someone calls a print from someone, all you probably need to do is just say, hey, is this a reproduction or is this um, uh, some sort of printmaking um, technique? Um, but there are ways to tell too. I you know a lot of, um, I watched Antiques Roadshow. Do you guys have that probably down in Texas too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. so uh, so I, I watch that quite a bit and I, I see, you know, you can tell an original print if it's an intaglio by the, the indent in it. Uh, I think they just have a different look to, if it's very flat and um, uh, kind of shiny, then then it, it might be a, a reprodu reproduction. But I was going to go through some of the types of printmaking. And so... Kathy, if you want to switch over to my other phone, which is lying on the drying rack. And can you still hear me if I'm walking over here? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. And I suppose I need to. There. Oh, there we go. So, the right way? No. Now can you see what I'm showing you? Maybe I should grab my computer. Hold on one second. Let me walk back over here. Then I can see um, what I am showing you. All right. Um, so the first thing is a relief relief print. There's there's a few different types, or I mean. You could do a relief print with almost anything that you can carve into uh, wood cut, lino cut. Um, I use a material called Sintra. It's a PVC plastic as a as a um, as a uh, you know the material that I'm cutting into. So these are these are some just black and white uh, lino cut or wood cuts. That I've done, and I've got a bunch here. But uh, one of the things with traditional printmaking, you know, they want, or they, who's they that I'm talking about? I'm not sure. But um, one of the goals that I try and have when I when I'm making a print is do the different impressions uh, look the same? So these are pretty good. Um, and then another thing with printmaking is usually you're going to have a number. Um, I was trained to put it in the middle. I know most people don't. I think they put it over on this side. 
title name, I think. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to ask uh, my old professor uh, why he started doing this. But anyway, so this one I have, the this number here is uh, 21. And this is number one out of 21. Um, this one is number 13 out of 21. And that just means that I made 21 of these prints. And that's the impression number one and 13. And then I usually put the title. I mean, the title untitled and the the date some people don't put the date either hey eric can yeah. you hear me okay? um there's a little bit of a feedback um sure. i uh um, i am not sure is there any way you could turn off well maybe try turning off the one or i'll try turning down the volume well, then I can't hear you. <laughs> should I uh, should I move the computer away from me again? I think so. I mean, I, I know that you can't right. see, but I can let you know whether or not we can see. How about that? Okay. All right. So that's um, the basic kind of uh, of a relief print. Okay, and then um, screen, uh, another type of print is a screen print. Um, I've got, I don't do a lot of screen printing. I just bought um, some equipment uh, last summer so I could do some at home. These are all old ones that I've done. And um, you know, screen print, I think with, with like the wood cut or lino cut, um, it's usually pretty easy to tell uh, what that is. Uh, with screen print, there's you get a little more variety uh, in um, how how they look. So, like this is a hand drawn, and so sort of these. Um, this is a, a a scan of a drawing and then printed out. So you can have it look pretty detailed. Um, this one is from a photograph, um, and with each with each of these different processes, there's probably hundreds, I don't know, of different ways you could do them. And there's always someone coming up with a new way to uh, to work with those. All right, so that's screen print. And then um, intaglio or um, etching is, a, is another type. This is a uh, intaglio. Um, the way that I learned, I think I learned on steel plates, and I can't remember the kind of acid that we used then, but this one is done on a copper plate. And I see this one is supposed to be my son's, Alex. Um, so Alex, if you're watching, I, I still have this. Um, I think he told me he wanted it when he was like nine. Anyway. Um, so with intaglio, you're taking a, taking a copper plate and you're covering it with a, a, a hard ground or a soft ground. And then you're either scratching through um, or uh, dipping that into a acid bath. Uh, with, and I think this is a spray paint aquatint that I did. And that's that texture. Um, once I was done with grad school, I'll go back to my, my history a little bit, about 20, almost 20 years ago, uh, I got a job teaching adjunct um, at, a, at a local university and I haven't done any um, intaglio or uh, etching for probably 10 years because I had focused so much on just doing relief. Uh, so these are all ones that it's like, hey, I need to teach this now. So let's, let's do some prints. Um, and these are a couple that I did. And this is again, the spray, the spray paint, um, Aquatint. So what I would do is just uh, mask off part of this, spray the spray paint, you know, and then you put it into an acid bath, very polar acid bath, and that's what comes out. And so, um, you know, that it's a it's a cool process. Uh, I, I haven't done one probably again in, in like ten years. This might be one of the last ones, or more, fourteen years. Um, I have done a couple color ones, um, but it's a, it's a pretty intensive 
process. Uh, lithography is, is another process. I don't really do much. I mean, my press isn't a lot of litho press, um, but a, a, lithograph, uh, a lithograph, sorry, stumbling over my words a little bit, is a um, process where you're drawing on a stone or a aluminum um, sheet, of, a sheet of aluminum um, with a greasy pencil. And then there's, and, and again, there's, this is only one way that I'm explaining it, but there's probably 50 or more ways you could do it. Um, and then it's a chemical process where it changes the makeup of the stone, um, or I guess I'm, I'm not that familiar with the aluminum plate. Uh, but with stone, it changes uh, the makeup of the stone when you do this acid etch. Um, so the parts that were drawn, uh, once that drawing is washed off, those areas will take in the ink. And um, that, because it's oil-based water, that repels water. And the other areas, because they're wet, will repel the ink. So hopefully I'm not botching this <laughs> explanation too much. But this is... Probably one of the only uh, lithos that I've ever had any success with. And this was a really easy, uh, I think this was a um, um, photocopy transfer uh, process that I did with that. Uh, monotype. Monotype is just taking uh, a, a, uh, a sheet of plastic or glass and you, you can roll on the ink. And then um, the way that I did this one, we rolled on the ink in layers um, and then took away with a, like a Q-tip or wiped away, um, printed one color. It was kind of a different process uh, for monotype. Usually you don't see monotypes additioned, um, but um, this was from a workshop. And I can't remember her name, but yeah, she does amazing um, additioned monotypes. And then I did some hand coloring uh, on, on this one. And then I'm probably, I'm probably missing other types of printmaking, so don't get offended if I didn't say something that you do. Uh, but um, mesotint is, is something that I've only done once. Uh, it was a lot of fun, I, but I, I never finished this print. Um, so this is a mesotint. Mesotint is, I've got one of the plates here, um, but it's using, it's kind of like um, um, intaglio in that it's using a copper plate, but you're not, et you're not uh, using acid to etch. Uh, you're, you're, the plate has, already, has kind of this texture to it and you're um, smoothing out areas. So when you put the ink on there, uh, the ink will go into the textured areas and, and stay in there. And then you kind of wipe it similar how, how you would with the intaglio. And then um, those areas that are smooth, the, the ink will come, come off of, excuse me. So that's, that's the, the basic ones I was going to run through. Um, like I said, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do each of those processes. And let me just get a little stand here. Do you guys have any questions while I get ready to show you specifically what I do? Or is there maybe no one watching? I know there are people watching. I don't see any questions in the feed though, okay. but um, I'll right. pipe in. Okay. So the process um, that I do is, is um, is a reduction relief print. Um, so I'm using a, like I said, a PVC plastic. And then um, it's, it's attached to a piece of plywood uh, just because I, I do um, so many colors that usually the, when I, when I have tried it without the, the backing, uh, the PVC will warp. Um, how, how, how do you attach it to your, your wood? I'm curious about that. Sure. Yeah, okay. just the contact cement. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you just coat, um, coat the Sintra on one side, coat the plywood 
and then you wait like 15 or 20 minutes, stick them together, and then it's stuck. Yep. So this is one that I haven't that I haven't done anything with. Um, uh, like I said, I had I had been working on a bunch of stuff for the last few years, so I kind of took a break. I have some ideas what I might do, but um, so the next thing that I would I would do if I was working on this uh, would be to either transfer a drawing onto this, or, um, or or sometimes I draw with a sharpie right on here. Or uh, the last way would be just to usually I print a color first, um, and then car you you're carving away where you want the color that you printed um, prior. You're you're carving away where you want that last color to stay. So I've got a a print that I'll show you uh, the different steps on. So this is this is one that I did in uh, 2018. So this is a just a, like I said. Usually I just start with a, a base color without carving anything. A lot of times I'll uh, like rough up the edge or something, just because that's what I started doing. <laughs> All right. So that's the yellow. And then on this one, you can see where I've cut away. Um, that's, hopefully you can see that. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay, I can turn this light here too. So that's uh, cut two, cut away where I wanted the first yellow to stay, then I cut away where I want the second yellow to stay. So I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the viewers know that you're. So what you're doing is you're doing your an entire addition with the first color yellow, and then oh right, carves, yeah. yeah, and then he carves away on the same plate, and then he prints that second color on top of the yellow. Yep. Um, yep. So this is uh, I switch from yellow to green. I'm really terrible at color names. I'm sure there's a specific uh, name for this green, but and then I went to a. I don't use a lot of brown in, or red reddish browns in my work usually, but this one I did. So um, and and so I guess the the white marks are where every. You're seeing where where everything else has been carved away too, um, not just uh, that previous one. But it's it's called the reduction process because you're you're reducing the block uh, after after you print every color, and um, after after this, I'll I'll show you the uh, the gouges that I use for carving. Uh, am I going to maybe going too slow? So this is step four. And sometimes the colors, I, I'm probably a very inefficient printmaker because I don't see a lot of difference in uh, this one in the last color. But it, it's a little bit darker brown. So I'm, I'm curious as to what your addition size usually is. So when you start with that first color with no carving. Um, um, usually uh, between 15 and 20 now. Uh, this one, this one, there's 15. Wow. Okay. Um, I, uh, uh, the, the registration got, uh, I'll talk about registration too, but for when I first started doing these, my registration system wasn't the greatest. Um, so I think even then I was probably starting with 10 or 15, but uh, because my registration, it's, it's pretty tough to keep them lined up. Um, you know, every layer has to line up with the last one within, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or, or less would be good. Um, 
So the, the way I do it now is it has, has really changed um, how many I start with. Like I pretty much have a couple extra that I start with instead of having um, half or whatever. So this is a seven. Or wait, that was eight, sorry. And then another green. And I wrote some, I had been meaning to do this for a long time, but then um, finally did it once. So I wrote notes on each of these two, if you can read them, but this one just says, for number 10, it was number nine plus various leftover greens. Well, um, I have an aqua, and then this is step 11. Uh, was a, a lot of, that's what I'll do a lot of times is use the, the last color that I print with to mix the next color if it's possible. Uh, so this one I used the last color with uh, various leftover purples and uh, rubine red. I hope we see the final print. <laughs> After this. <laughs> so I'll quickly go through the last. This is 13 and 14. And you can see there's less and less uh, that's left of the block. 15. I'm almost done. 16. 17 and then I usually know when I'm done when there's nothing left to, to cut away no I'm just kidding but sometimes it feels that way so this is the last uh, layer that I printed and then um, just for the addition I printed on um, uh, this tan or a buff paper but um, just to have an example I printed a couple on white so this is the the finished print on on it's shiny sorry on white and then this is the uh, the finish uh, what the addition looks like so this this uh, we if you're collecting you you might see trial proofs um, sometimes too. Uh, this one I, I said was a trial proof because I was trying a different um, paper. Um, sometimes I have trial proofs where I'll try a different color. And I'm not sure how well this is showing up for you guys, but. Well, I just, I just, uh, so if, if you have an addition of 15 and you have 18 colors, you've run it through the press 270 times. Yeah, I try not to think about those things. <laughs> That's, wow, that's impressive. Um, thank you. And then um, I was going to show you one, one other one. This is one that I just uh, finished. Uh, well, not just finished, but a few months ago. So this one is um, an edition of 19. And uh, this is the one I started last... Um, right right into the pandemic or right before like january or february i think i, I did three colors uh, a rainbow roll or a split fountain for the first one um so i don't know if you want to count that one or or three uh so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen twenty colors on this one or twenty two but so that's that. Wow. Um, so let me, if you want me to do a little demo, a cutting demo, or is there are any questions or anything? So far, there are no questions. And a cutting demo, or okay. is there are any questions or anything? Okay, let me turn. Sorry about that. 
I'll put this one way on the other side over here. He just had a I'll weird. Put this one way on the other side. Yeah, I thought we had the uh, the echo kind of fixed, but. All right. No, I'm not hearing that though. Kathy, are you still there? I am still here. We, there was like a weird. There was like a weird thing happening a few seconds ago where uh, it was repeating. Kathy, are you still there? <laughs> Oh shoot! Okay. There was like a weird. There was like a weird oh. thing happening a few seconds ago where uh, it was repeating. Oh shoot! Oh Uh, I can't hear you. Oh, wait, oh maybe... hi. Oh, there we go. That was really weird. Um, All right. uh, I can't hear you. Oh, wait, oh. Wait. hi. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was really weird. Um, All right. uh, I can't hear you. Oh, hi. Oh, <laughs> that was really weird. Um, right. Oops. Uh, I can't hear you. Oh, hi. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you. I turned my mic off. <laughs> okay, I am so sorry. I don't know what the deal was, but let's resume. Okay. 
should I just leave my phone off then probably? I think, you know, honestly, I think that was on my end. Oh, so, okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm the tech person and I obviously don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, carry on. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, well, I guess I, um, does anyone have any questions or anything? So I have one, I have one print that I am um, working on, um, but not, not working very hard on. Uh, so, uh, so I printed, I think I've done one color on this one so far and I'm, uh, I'm ready to, to do the next one. Um, and I can roll, I can roll it up and, and run it through the press is what the plan was. So let's, uh, let's do that. And I'm going to try and adjust my, my stand here. And if you have any, um, if you have any questions, uh, while I'm getting ready to print, uh, let me know. I'm, I can show you the uh, the tools I use too. So these are the uh, I use uh, the feel. I think the file or feel gouges. Um, I started using them a few years ago, and it's changed my life with cutting. Uh, so I have I have a bunch, and then I have um, I think these are for 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 woodworking, but I, I use them occasionally for, for uh, bigger cuts. Um, I can do, I, I think I'm, honestly, it's been a, a, few, a couple months probably since I printed this, but I think I'm ready for the next color. So I don't really need to cut any uh, unless anyone wants to see that. But, but it, and it's really hard to see where I've cut into because I don't normally do that. Uh, red uh, dye stuff. So that's just Sharpie mark that you have on there right um, now? This is, well, that's another, um, so I do, uh, I use a uh, methyl salicylate. Um, it's a oil of wintergreen and a photocopy or a, or a laser printout. Oh, oh, to, to transfer. Yeah. transfer, yeah. I bought some, like these bottles are 20 some years old. I don't know if you can buy it anymore, but I think you can get it um, as methyl, so, yeah, methyl salicylate um, from like chemical companies or something. Oops. So I'm trying to figure out the best place to have it. If you, if you just want to let me know if there's any questions. Okay. I'll yep. watch the feed. I, yeah, we, this is a good, great setup to see what's happening here. Um, oh, so I should show you too. So this, this is my pile of leftover ink um, from, from other colors. Uh, what I was planning on doing with this one was um, uh, just having uh, it was it was a rainy day driving home, and so it's going to be kind of gray. So grays, and I was debating on whether or not to do blues, but this is the first color. Uh, so there's not a lot to see right now. So I noticed the dots on your paper. That must be your registration. I mean, I, I'm not going to. I don't want to interrupt you, but I just was playing. Oh, yeah, the whole bunch. Yeah, uh, I will. I will show you what I do. Um, that was uh, kind of an accident. Um, I had done some some punch registration for a screen print, and um, I was. I think I was cutting down some Sintra that was already stuck to some plywood. Um, I don't know if I cut it wrong or something. Um, and so this is a Sintra. <clears throat> this is this is my prototype of my registration guide. But I, I see there's other people using the or similar things too. 
Uh, so I thought, you know, if I can get a, a little bit thicker plywood um, instead of this, I don't uh, quarter inch or whatever I was using, um, I could run this whole thing through the press instead of having to try to, I was using like a, a corner guide like that, but um, I was having to mark the paper on the back um, and then set it up in the corner guide and then transfer that to, um, to the press, which um, was where a lot of, I think the shifting came and then off register and uh, lost prints. So this is, it's been a way better um, as far as accuracy way to do it. Well, the other thing I, since I have um, had my studio at home here and um, before that I had a, uh, I bought this press and I didn't really have any place to put it and it's a huge press. Um, but I, I, I was, I was working on a place to put it. Uh, but in the meantime, I, um, our, our mall in Fargo does a uh, artist residency thing. Um, you know, it, up sometimes they last like nine months, I think, or, or, you know, for several months, they'll have an artist come in and work at the mall. Um, so I had, I purchased it and then I asked um, if, if I could put it in their mall and, and work for a while. But um, the West Acre Shopping Center, they have a, a it's, they're really generous. I, I got paid a stipend to work at, at the mall uh, for five months with, with my new press. So, so that was a good kind of transition. From, uh, from the studio at NDSU to to um, having my own studio. And then another, what I was gonna say, because I was slipped on these gloves is, at, at the mall when I was working, um, there was no water in the space that I was in. So I got used to, uh, instead of washing my hands and not wearing gloves all the time, I started um, wearing gloves. And let's see. Maybe just going to add one more touch of blue here. And I do use dryer um, in the ink, but there's always um, some left over from the pre from the previous color um, that I use. So I usually don't add much unless I add a lot of, of new ink. All right. So I went from um, the one big change with the pandemic for me was um, before um, I was driving to to teach in Detroit Lakes, uh, which is about ninety was it ninety miles or ninety five miles or ninety eight miles anyway about an hour and a half uh, from where I live 
Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden, last spring we went to to all virtual, and then uh, this past fall we were um, one day in person, and then one day virtual, and then this spring is all all virtual. Guide. So I've been meaning to eventually like make a nicer version of this, but this is still the first one I made. And since I have a metal press bed, I was thinking of um, making some improvements, like adding a uh, little little magnet so it would stick down when I put it down. But um, I haven't got to. Usually, what I do too is um, mark which. That is a top, and um, so just give me a second while I figure that out. So this just goes, um, you know, it's just cornered in uh, as tight as you can get it, and you just want to make sure that it's in, if there's a gap or something, you want to, like if it tilts one way, you always want to make sure that that you're doing it the same way every time. And then the uh, um, so the the punches uh, go on to these. Kathy, do you know what these little metal things are called? The punch buttons. Well, yeah, I mean, I um, I've purchased some before for yeah. a workshop that we did recently, and I I can look up the name of the company, but. Um, I think there's only one place that sell that sells them, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, I um, when we were doing the screen printing, um, uh, there was a workshop too. I think with Tim Dooley and someone else that was like in 2000. Um, but they I think we just got went to the hardware store and they're like bolt uh, covered. Like you put them on uh, the only place that I've saw them really are like on a wagon wheel, a red. A uh, red uh, wagon, you know, after you put the wheel on, then you put the, the nut on, and then you put a little cover on. Oh, okay, okay. But, but I know there is a company specifically that does that too. Yeah, they sell they sell them. They're kind of like on tabs. Yeah. Um, and it's different. I think your system is better because um, are you just using like a like a how are you punching the holes in your paper? Oh, with a, well, um, I think at NDSU they have the same thing. So um, I got this from uh, Jack Hodge. You know, it's probably, I probably could have just used a normal, like, hole punch, just, and then the rest tabs. Um, so they matched up instead okay. of buying, buying, buying the, Expensive thing, but eventually, if I do other stuff, it's not good. yeah, I, yeah. So I use that from Tackouts, um, and then I just use a piece of uh, mat board. Um, and then. It, it's probably not going to be don't it's not going to be a drastic change <laughs> since it's the beginning stage on this one but um but it almost looks like i just printed a white first um and sometimes the colors um you won't see the change until you know, this looks white to me, but it's, you know, it's a gray, but sometimes if you, you know, if what's surrounding it, that color will, will change how it looks too. Yeah, I like how you've done like the second color doesn't line up exact or is like carved, carved away some from the first color. Yeah, I started doing that um, too, kind of like the, the edges are, are crooked. I think with this cityscape I have up here, I, um, after each color, I don't know if you can see, I carved a little like eighth of an inch around. 
Mm -hmm. So on the outside edge, you can see uh, the, the rainbow roll, like the blue to yellow to pink, the, the first one that I did there. Nice. Um, but yeah. So what do you have lined up today? Today is the International Day of, of um, print. Well, it's, uh, I think yeah. it's for it's a, like a working day, but we printmakers yeah. have required it as their own day. So yeah. May 1st is the um, print day. Um, yeah, so this afternoon I am going to um, I'm going to be doing a demo at uh, the Rourke Art Museum in Moorhead. Um, and I've since I bought this screen print stuff, I have a little exposure unit that's kind of hidden because I don't have space for it yet. But so I use it down there under under my light table. Um, I tried <laughs> kind of mostly unsuccessfully yesterday to make some screens, um, but I got a couple to work. Uh, I don't know if I might. Yeah, we can kind of, we can kind of see what you're showing. You've got yeah. some, yeah. So I made some uh, positives with uh, some ink, and then I did some um, photocopy, uh, making them into positives with a baby oil thing. So print day in May stuff, and uh, yeah, I got this one didn't really work. I tried it twice. It was frustrating. You know, printmaking is frustrating, right? <laughs> Occasionally. Um, had, it, had some problems uh, washing out yesterday, so. But I think I got them. So uh, something should work. So, yeah. I guess I don't... I can do some more demoing. Did anyone come back? Um, you know, oddly enough, we didn't lose anybody during that weird feedback. So thank, thank you, people. Thanks, folks, for hanging in there. I see my my sister Ellen uh, from Montana is there. Oh. <laughs> So, well, um, and I guess, I guess we're kind of we're wrapping up because we've kind of reached our time. Yeah. If anybody has any questions that we can answer, I mean, I guess from your demonstration of the, the reduction woodcut, which um, when you see multiple colors on a print, uh, there, there could be all different kinds of ways. People could have carved more than one block. Yep. They have one block for yellow, one block for green, for instance. But the way that Eric is doing it, is that after the addition is completely done, well, there's nothing left of the block. And so, um, as you can see, printmakers have this thing with reproductions because now people are making reproductions and numbering their reproductions. And so it's completely different than pushing print to what Eric was doing with multiple colors on, um, on a reduction uh, relief. Really? And a lot of times with with uh, intaglio, um, like working on this with this with my process or with this pro reduction process, the, the plate is destroyed after, uh, like you were saying. But um, sometimes you know you'll see like uh, Rem Rembrandt etchings um, at a museum, and and so some they they may still have his uh, uh, plates or whatever. And they may reprint them, but um, but and then other times artists will do a strike through uh, through the uh, through the uh, the metal, so no one can make more, you know, later on. But, yeah. So great. Well, um, what else do you have coming up on the horizon for yourself? I mean, what? So tell me, tell us about the show that you have going on right now. Um, uh, well, the find you. yeah, the show um, the show is on uh, at, at the Rourke Art Museum in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, it's the Rourke Art Museum um, and Gallery, and I think their website is uh, RourkeArt.com. But it, you could just search Rourke, um, the Rourke 
in Moorhead, and you should find it. Um, they have they have all the the pieces on their on their website, um, where you can even from wherever you are, uh, you could could see everything that's in that exhibit. So I've got um, 30, 37, I think was the final number that I had. I think I had um, like close to fifty that I was had done. Um, wow. so I, didn't, I didn't really need to make any more, um, but I made two more um, over the last year, and then I cut some out. So. Um, yeah, so that's going on through um, until June uh, 6th uh, in Moorhead, um, but you can see it virtually. And then um, I'm, we, myself and uh, I think there were eight of us or nine of us when we started. Um, we started uh, Dakota Fine Art. Um, that's in Fargo. Uh, so I've helped to run a, a cooperative or collective gallery. Um, um, and we, we don't have a website yet, but uh, but yeah, if you ever get to Fargo, you can you can see my work there usually, or or run into me if I'm working. Well, what about your website? What's your website or Instagram? We will leave folks with that. Sure, yeah, uh, Instagram is um, Big Oak Press, and uh, my website uh, is uh, www dot e a j arts dot com and uh eventually i'd like to change it but that's what it's been i think when i was in college they said um come up with a name for your website you know like in 1994 and that's the one that i came up with eaj arts so it's it's uh um, it's my initials and then arts uh but people say what's e jarts <laughs> <laughs> so uh so eventually I'll probably change that to big old press, but uh, yeah, but, but not yet. Well, thank you for your time and thanks folks for tuning in. And again, thanks for bearing through that um, bit of weird weirdness that we had. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. But <laughs> thank you, Kathy, for having it. Thank you, Eric. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.